Good day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday afternoon here in Australia and the market took a massive dive. So we broke below that 1.2 trillion and we're getting down towards the actual $2 trillion mark. And I've found something in both the uh, market cap, the total market cap chart and the Bitcoin chart that might give us an indication of where, excuse me, the market might be going. And I'll get to that shortly. But look, down 8.7%, so that hurt. Bitcoin dominance re rose ever so slightly, still kind of hanging around that 38% level, just under 39%. Definitely a lot of volume in there, which was interesting, and Bitcoin below that $43,000 mark. And I did tell you to set some, well, I didn't tell you to do anything because I'm not giving you financial advice, but I did say putting a buy order in around kind of 43000 might not be a bad idea. Again, don't go all crazy and throw all your money in just in case it goes lower, but it wouldn't have been a bad place. And I had a buy order in and it got triggered, so I'm very happy with that. Now, gas price is around $7. Now, considering the market's down so much, has anything gone up other than USDC? <laughs> it's sitting right at a dollar and it's up 0.01%. All right, any gainers at all in the top 100? All right, we've got a couple. Safe Moon, good lord, I don't get that, but it's up. Uh, Magic Internet Money is up 0.3 ever percent, and Frax, uh, again, these look like kind of stable coin sort of stuff then. So, really, one gain, Safe Moon, of all the things that would make a move, Safe Moon, there you go, and then everything is down. Well, all right, what is down the most in the top 100? This is going to be scary. Celsius down 20%, Spell down 20%, Axie uh, 17.5%, Loop Ring 17%. I mean, look, it's just double digits right across the board, isn't it? And this hurts. Gala down 16%, Chili's down 15.5% you know, nearly, like just right across the board. Bang, 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 bang. Even Matic $2.13 got up around $2.80 and then, yeah. Ouch. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you are taking some profits. When you get coins that are up massively, and trust me, I know it's the hardest thing to do. And I only had to re rebalance my portfolio literally, oh God, what was it, like a week ago maybe? Two weeks ago, I think? No, a little bit more. I think it was around December 14th, so sort of three weeks ago. Uh, and I had to sell some things that were at losses, and look, I'm glad I did, because they've all gone down even further now, so I can you know, buy back in at cheaper prices and just write that off on tax. But that wasn't my plan, but I just realized that maybe the market wasn't gonna be as hot as what I thought, and I didn't have enough cash. I wanted to have a minimum of 10% on me at all times, and now that 10% cash that I have is worth a little bit more than 10% now. And look, I don't think it's all bad news, but we'll get to the chart and have a look. Now, here's something interesting I found. Right, first of all, let's have a look at the Bitcoin chart. So bang, we had that big drop, and I did say, look, if we got down to the $45,000 range, it'd be a pretty quick fall down to kind of 42, 43, and it was pretty quick, and there you go. We came straight down. Now we're just hovering around. Now, here's the critical level. We need to hold around about sort of 40-ish thousand dollars. I'd say, yeah, 40-ish thousand dollars. If we don't hold that, I think we're going down to this $33,500 level pretty quickly. I don't think the support here will hold if we fall through. I think we will cover that CME gap down there. Again, it doesn't have to go to 33500 The gap is between thirty two and a half and thirty four and a half. So I just said, all right, let's uh, call it thirty three and a half. But I think this will come down and that gap will get pr filled pretty quickly if we come down into the kind of $36,000 range. I think there'll just be one big wick that'll push it down, cover that, and then I would be hoping that we would recover, but we may be in a bear market. I don't think we are. Most people don't think we are, but there are some people out there that think we are. And so for me, I'm not doing anything crazy. I'm not making any big buys at the moment. I've told you that. I did put one, I think, percent uh, into Immutable X, and that's probably going to have burnt me a little bit. But again, it's 1% of my total portfolio. 
I don't go crazy on anything until things are really, really down. Like if we start seeing projects that are down 70% from their all-time highs, I will start to heavily invest in them. Now, not crazy heavily, as in throwing everything, because they might have to go down to 90%, 95% uh, from their old all-time highs. I don't know, but I know we are getting close. And again, I'm just looking for this $40,000 level on Bitcoin to see if it holds. And here's why. We go over to the total market cap. You have a look at this. This was a full sort of basically 50, per, you know, 5% retracement. But look where it went down to. Oh, it's, I'm going to lose this, but that's all right. When it retraced, it had a full 50% retracement. And look where it basically went to. There was this one little wick, but old resistance lines became support. So now what I'm looking at is have a look at this. If the market cap comes down to about 1.7, 1 1.7 and a half market cap, old resistance levels, a number of old resistance levels. Now, where was that uh, happening? We can use this kind of date here, around about the 20th of September. Where was Bitcoin on the 20th of September? Have a look at that, around 40,000. And it was there before, was there before, was there before, and it was there before. These two charts are marrying up quite nicely. I don't know if the dates will be exactly the same. I think they probably won't be too far off. And then again, some of the dates over here. But basically what I'm looking for is I think 1.75 trillion, thereabouts, will be the low. Again, within this range. We started it here, we peaked up to the top, we came back down, we retested it, we had a breakout to the top, and now we're coming down, and maybe we're going to retest it. Now the question really is how long is it going to take? Is it gonna be something that happens drastic? Like I said, if we lose that $40,000 range, which is here, and we're not too far off, I think we come down pretty quick to that kind of $36,000 range, and then I think we get pretty down uh, to yeah, the $33,500 range fairly quickly as well. And where will that leave us? Around about prices that we were at, let's say 14th of July. Now there's no guarantees these match up. Where was the 14th of July? Oh, 14th of July. All right, that means we might be coming down to sort of 1.3 trillion. Now again, I don't know if it's gonna play out exactly like that. I'm really thinking more around this 1.75. I don't know if we could go back to 1.3 trillion, but what would be a 55% correction considering that one was from where we are right now? Right, 55% correction. Well, have a look at that. 1.3 four nine trillion that was a 50 percent correction if this turns out to be a 55 sorry a 55 it was 54 point something let's just round it off 55 percent correction if we get a 55 percent correction from here i think we can see the market cap come back down to 1.349 trillion thereabouts and that would have bitcoin down around about here possibly again i'm sort of just putting two and two together when I'm looking at this, I can't be sure, but I think it's something very, very interesting that I'm going to keep an eye on. So again, I had a buy order here for Bitcoin. It got filled. It wasn't a whole lot. It was just a little bit. I'm going to have another buy order. I've got to not have, I have another buy order set in. I can't remember exactly what it is. I think it's 37,500-ish, something like that. Again, this one was like 42, uh, 42,500 something like that and that one has been filled and I'll see if that's been filled and then I 100% am going to have another buy order just above this 34,000 sort of 600 thereabouts but again I'm not throwing the kitchen sink the kitchen sink at any of those because this could be just again a true we may be in a bear market ladies and gentlemen we may be I don't believe we are I think this is just a healthy correction and I actually think these are the new bear markets I think that's what this will do it's going to be constantly like this uh, up and down up and down with sort of 50 ish percent corrections until the market matures when that may be is it in the next three years four years five years ten years i don't know i'm just not sure if we'll see those same kind of 
bear markets that we have that took a whole year to sort of fulfill to reach to the bottom thereabouts and then you know another couple of sort of years to be able to get back to its old all-time highs we may and if that's the case that's why i don't want to chuck money in at any one single place thinking i've read the market perfectly but i just find it very interesting that again that forty thousand dollar level i think marries up perfectly with basically this so i'm looking for the 1.75 uh, you know, you can say sort of one point, yeah, let's just go 1.75 trillion dollar mark. I'm hoping that that will be the bottom, that this will find its way down there and bounce. But again, it may be that we have to come back down to this 1.3, you know, 1.35, let's just say, trillion dollar mark. And I think that then closes that Bitcoin gap down at 30, again, between 32 and a half thousand and 34 and a half thousand. And that is the last CME gap excuse me, other than getting down to, I think it's $22,000 or $24,000. And look, in all fairness, if we make it down to the $33,500 CME gap, you know, it's really 50-50 from there, whether we're in a bear market, because really a 50% retracement uh, is really where you can start to consider a bear market in crypto. Before that, it's just a correction. So unfortunately, it's going to take some time to work out exactly what was going on. But again, levels that I'm looking for, I'm going to be basing it off these kind of things that I've seen here. And again, just marrying up the sort of dates and times. So if 40,000 is gone, I'm definitely thinking this 36,000 will happen pretty quickly. And if that does happen, again, you know, we could bounce from just above it. But if we go into it, again, I think we then fall down to this pretty quickly. And I would hope that we bounce from there. All right, you know where I'm, you know what I'm thinking of, and again, I'm not deploying any crazy money at any stage of the moment. I rebalance my portfolio. I got 10% in cash, and I'm going to keep that 10% at all times. Still dollar cost averaging, but if the market's going down, I'm not really buying too much other than Bitcoin. I don't mind buying Bitcoin basically all the time, but I, what I really like is buying it at a discount. But I'm not just again. Let's say you're putting in 50 bucks a week. I'm not putting my whole $50 into Bitcoin. I'm putting 30% of that $50 into Bitcoin and the rest of it I'm basically leaving in cash. I might put a little bit towards Ethereum. I'm still somewhat concerned about Ethereum. But I am putting, uh, again, mainly just Bitcoin and again, maybe a little bit into Ethereum, maybe 20%. So 50% of what I have might go into Bitcoin and Ethereum and then the rest will just be in cash simply waiting to see what happens and if you know certain projects hit certain prices again bitcoin you know hits down here well then i put a little bit more in but bitcoin gets down here i'll put a little bit more in and if ethereum hits prices and other projects i like then i will put small amounts in at those stages but otherwise it's just focusing on bitcoin and mainly cash at the moment until i see a reversal something else that happens in this uh you know the entire financial space because here's what I want you to remember, ladies and gentlemen. If you think this is just crypto at the moment, think again. Bitcoin plunges below 43K as Wall Street tumbles. This is across the board. This is the news of the Fed tightening and all the rest of it. Everyone's getting worried. So 1.9% fall on the S&P 500 and a 3% fall on the NASDAQ. So it's not just cryptocurrencies. It's everything that's getting hit at the moment. There is no safe haven. What is happening at the moment is they're trying to make the dollar you know, go back to be a safe haven. And look, ladies and gentlemen, hence why I got my position in cash uh, and I'm staking... Uh, you know, earning rewards and all the rest of it on it. It's short term. It may last a year. It may last five years. You know, po I, I couldn't imagine it lasting 10 years. I really don't think it would even last five. They will tighten. They're not going to stop. Just remember that. They will continue to print money. Money will never simply stop being printed for any great length of time because then, you know, the powers that be, they can't, you know, control the place. They need to keep printing to keep uh, themselves rich. If the money just stops, if it shuts off for everyone, well then, yeah, the money you have is worth a lot, but there's no more fresh money coming in. So that's something you just need to keep uh, an eye on. So again, cash may rule for a little while, but they are not going to simply shut off the printer. They are just going to taper it. Tapering isn't stopping. Bitcoin doesn't taper. 
Well, well, it does. It's getting less and less that's being printed. But it's got a finite supply. So once that's done, it is done. It's not the same with fiat. So just remember that. Over the sort of short to maybe midterm, the dollar may kind of rise and cryptos may fall. But over the long term, the dollar, all of them go the same route. So keep that in mind. And that it's not just crypto getting hit at the moment. There are no real safe havens. And volatility is the price we pay for those massive gains. Unfortunately, you can't have the massive upside if you don't have the uh, pretty large downside as well. All right, something else. Again, Arve, I've been talking about this now. The Arve price can continue to go down. Don't get me wrong. It's not going to simply buck the trend, but I just like what Arve is doing long term. Hence why I'm kind of happy to buy Arve again at any price that seems a discount really. And at the mo and at the moment, it is quite discounted from where it's been. But considering the whole space. I don't know, just be careful. Like I said, I think DeFi could, you know, have some moments where it does okay. But really, if the whole market and everything's going down, DeFi is not going to, um, you know, do all that well because unfortunately everything's going down. But moving on anyway, DeFi lending startup Aave launches permission platform to entice financial institutions. Now look, if they all get on board and start trying to seek some yield considering what's happening, it could push the Aave price really high, but there's no guarantees. Just because people are using the platform doesn't mean they're buying the Aave token. So that's what you need to remember. I would really like Aave, the protocol, to take some of the profits that gets made and give it back to the people who own the Aave token. That would make better tokenomics and then that would really change things. And then if Aave uh, itself is doing well, then also the people that you know stake and provide the liquidity are going to do well as well. But we'll have to wait and see. But, <clears throat> excuse me, so Aave Arc will leverage, leverage <clears throat> excuse me, Fireblocks as the first whitelister as the platform aims to help bridge traditional finance institutions with DeFi. So the crypto custody firm Fireblocks has approved 30 financial entities to join Aave Arc. The list includes firms like Ribbit Capital, CoinShares, Hidden Road, Wintermute, and Celsius. And we know that uh, Ciba Bank was also one that has looked to get on the whitelist and there's going to be other companies that are going to follow suit. In times like this, they're going to be looking for any possible way to try and get some yield. Ave Arc seems like they're doing it. And again, they're going to have all KYC and everything. So, you know, keep an eye on this space. But again, don't rush out and buy a whole stack of Ave thinking that it means Ave is going to the moon. Just because people are using Ave doesn't mean they're buying the token. Hence why I think the Aave tokenomics need to change a little bit. And Aave Arc is kind of, it's part of Aave, but it's also separate as well. So we'll have to wait and see how that all pans out. I know Aave Arc will be governed by Aave, but, you know, again, how the tokenomics and, you know, the money that's made and all the rest of it works, we'll have to wait and see. All right, last but not least, crypto browser Brave surpass, sorry, passes 50 million dollar 50 not million dollar 50 million monthly active users so brave has done extremely well and i mean you get bat tokens simply for using brave so that's nice you know you're being rewarded and you know, the token can go up a little bit and can go down a little bit or it can go up a lot and sort of can go down a lot but in the end you are being paid to use brave name me another web browser that's paying you to use their their browser even if it is only a tiniest little amount, <clears throat> you're being paid. That's better than not being paid. So just something, I, you know, I regularly use Brave. I love it. Uh, I've been using it for a long time. I've never done anything with any of the BAT tokens that I've got, but maybe someday I will. And again, at least it will be something uh, in my pocket. So I really like that. And don't get me wrong, they're making money as well. <clears throat> I don't begrudge anyone that's making money but 50 million monthly active users, they have built quite the reputation and quite the user base in not a very uh, long amount of time. All right, look, that's it from me, ladies and gentlemen. Again, keep an eye out on the total market cap. I get the feeling like it's probably going to come down to around about 1.75. Now, again, it's just a gut feeling. I'm not telling you anything that uh, is guaranteed to happen. That's just what I'm looking at. That's just me kind of marrying up things and looking at charts going, where do I think it could be? Well, it's been here before, and that was the fake out, so maybe here. 
But if this was a 55% correction, then the 55% from here, again, takes us down to basically one point, let's say three point, $1.35 trillion mark. And that would have Bitcoin, again, closing that CME gap down here. All right, stay safe. Be kind to one another. Pretty hard to be on that game train at the moment. But if you are, congratulations, because you've really outplayed the market. And I'll see you next time.